Our next speaker co-founded a leading hospitality connectivity platform that was quickly swept up by Expedia before creating one of top 10 travel apps globally. A college dropout yet thriving travel entrepreneur, please welcome Hopper's founder and CEO, Fred Lalonde. This is Pan Am Central Reservation System, circa 1950. That big mahogany board you see in the back shows every flight and every seat that the airline operated. The agents, all 20 of them, that you see in the front were taking customer calls, and when somebody asked to book a ticket, they would look up and, based on the color on that board, figure out if the seat was available. When a ticket was issued, that guy on the ladder would go change the seat count. The fares were in notepads on the desks. You see, back then, the airlines would actually have their prices set by the government years in advance, and they competed on quality of service. This is the Hillcron reservation system, also circa 1950. The mahogany board shows every hotel that the chain owned and every room available, and again, Prices are on notepads on the desks. You could book a room by phone, telegram, or teletype, which was a huge innovation. The mahogany board was such a progressive innovation that American Airlines featured it in its advertising in the 1950s, alongside a promise of friendship. This happened in 1964. American Airlines contracted IBM to connect 2,000 of these terminals over telephone lines to a pair of 7090 servers. This system could return airfare pricing and availability within three sections across the entire United States. The boys at IBM gave this a very sexy name. They called it Semi-Automatic Business Environment Research, or SABER. Now you know. My point is this. In the 70 plus years where people have been doing this, the technology has evolved, but the basic principle has always been the same. Give two dates, two airport codes, and get a price. For all of this technological progress, it's the same metaphor. You have to do everything manually. You have to search every time you want to get a price quote. And this hasn't changed except on January 9th, 2013, at 1.30 a.m. GMT, which is about 9 p.m. Eastern Time, something different happened. From the Sabre Data Center, this message was broadcast. What changed for the first time is that the mahogany board started transmitting. So maybe my analogy is a little bit overdone. This did not spark a global race for the moon, but what happened at that time is for the first time, something that somebody else had asked for got communicated outwards. What that message contained is that somebody wanted to go from Albany to Cleveland for one day, and the lowest fare was 416 on United. So why does this matter? Who cares if this guy wants to go on a business trip to Cleveland? Well, what happened on that day for the very, very first time, the travel industry infrastructure for air started broadcasting and storing demand data. And before that day, nobody had ever bothered to store, analyze at any scale user demand for flights. Now, if you work in big data or data science, you know how insane that statement sounds, but it's true. So shortly after that, we would get thousands more message out of Sabre, Travelport would get in the game, Amadeus would follow, everybody started broadcasting, and so we got this. What this is showing is a particular flight route, Boston to London Heathrow. And what you see on the top axis is every departure date, returns on the bottom, and the slanted y-axis is predictably the length of stay. Every dot that you see is therefore a departure date. Every time you see something blinking, it's because somebody, probably thousands of people, are currently shopping for that particular pair of departure and returns. The colors represent the prices, red expensive, green cheap. You can see those triangles at the top. They're waiting to mess with business travelers like us, right? Short advance, short departures, 
expensive all the time. What you'll notice as this simulation goes by, every second represents about three hours of real time. It's going to play through the entire year. As this time goes by, where you see a lot of blinking dots, eventually the prices start to go up. In other words, demand data, this organic pulsation you see, precedes the raising of prices. Therefore, it's a leading indicator. So what can you do with this at scale? Well, you can predict the future, which if you've used our app, you know we do that, but that's not why I'm here. What you have for the first time ever is you know when a good price appears before the customer asks. And it turns out that that simple principle, mobile is a perfect delivery mechanism for inverting how that relationship works. So now travel migrates from a search metaphor where you call in to consult the mahogany board or you send a telegram to get a price or you pop up an app and you search to a conversation. The technology is now talking to the customer. The customer becomes passive. That's why we call this a conversation. Now, that's hard to understand. It's much easier to think of things as search result screens. So I have a little illustration for you. What you see here is about a year's worth of our conversation at Hopper. These, every single projection you see here is a push notification that was sent to a user's phone that contains some amount of price payload. This entire conversation is what powers everything we do. 90% of every ticket we sell comes from a push notification. And we have an AI technology, which we generally don't talk about, which actually makes recommendations off of this conversation and how people consume this content. 20% of every ticket we sell today is generated by this AI algorithm. Now, you can kind of see the scale. Even the animation itself is getting glitchy. You're only seeing one out of every 500 push notification we sent because we literally couldn't get this thing to work at scale. In reality, We've had 43 million trips planned on the platform, and we've sent close to 2 billion push notifications in a little bit over two years. Now, in order to send 2 billion push notifications and not annoy every single one of your users, you need a massive stack of technology to optimize that. And actually, we have more intellectual property and engineering that goes into the conversation management than our forecasting tools. So for us, mobile is a complete sea change. What can you do with hotels? Well, we always start with data. So we did exactly the same thing we did in air. We collected data. You have about 200 systems that contain hotel demand data. It's extremely messy. But eventually, over two years, we were able to pull this together. What you're seeing there is a similar vi visualization. It's about couple dozen hotels that participate in Hopper in New York City, and you're seeing the same thing. As, as time goes by, the demand represents the pulsations. Now, you'll see some discipline here. There are some periods in red where there's a lot of demand, predictably Christmas and New Year's, Eve, New Year's Eve. You see some low periods, but look at what happens closer to the arrival. It's almost complete chaos. There's barely any discipline. Some guys are going up, some guys are going down, some guys are closed altogether on their inventory. The truth is, in the hotel category, only about 8% of properties use software to set their rates. In a marketplace this inefficient, monitoring rates day in, day out are going to generate a huge amount of savings. It turns out in air, we save our average user about $40 per trip. In hotels, the amount of savings we can find by tracking these prices is above $200 per stay. And we've actually found the best time to buy a hotel statistically is not last minute. You can get some deals, but you can see by this chaos it's not guaranteed. The best time is actually two to three months before arrival, which is before most people buy their flight, interestingly enough. So here's a quick look at the product. Um, with this data, we've done the same familiar things that you would expect. We actually give you guidance on which days you should be shopping. Um, and also beyond that, we've made the same efforts in the prediction algorithm. So in hotels, it makes no sense to say hotels in New York are going to drop because 
it's not just a piece of fuselage. You care where you stay. You care about the star category. You care about your experience a lot more. So what we do is actually market level predictions. We can tell you these hotels are not going to be in cheaper into the future. And we can say these hotels are going to drop you should probably be tracking these prices. At any given time, both of those things exist simultaneously in a market. Also, moving forward, we're able to give you some insight on what the price of every individual hotel is going to do. So this is cool, but the amount of anxiety around the price in the consumer's mind is not the same thing as air, partially because of this lack of discipline I was talking about earlier. So a lot of it has to do with the experience. So we looked at the mobile experience from the ground up, um, and a lot of what we've been doing is focusing on how to help you choose a hotel on your phone. Most people look at their phones 150 times a day, right? And 78% of all content on the internet is now video. So for us, it was completely logical to build an entirely vertical video-based experience. So we have teams going around the country with a iPhones and stabilizers that are specifically shooting between 100 and 150 units of content that cover every aspect of the hotel, the bathroom, the, the, the restaurant, the environment around it. As, as you can see, this looks and feels like social media. It stands to be said that we're a 67% millennial demographic app, so this makes a lot of sense. But beyond that, we're seeing absolutely ridiculous engagement on this type of content. It's actually a very interesting passive way to just browse through hotels throughout your day while you're waiting at your latte for Starbucks, for example. So what does the opportunity look like? We've been the largest airfare um, app for about two years in North America. Um, and if you look at our current usage, we have 100,000 trips being planned on the app every day. Our average length of stay is eight days. We have a very high international travel mix. That means that we're generating 800,000 potential stay nights a day already in our app at our current scale. If we'd been doing the hotel business, our opportunity in the last two years would have been close to over 300 million room nights. So, it's been two weeks. It's too early to tell what our success is going to be. But if I see you next year, you can ask me how it's gone. Thank you.